we just got done at the laundromat. So exciting. Yes. This is RV life at its finest. <laughs> <laughs> and next we're going to go dump tanks. <laughs> yeah, this is the day in the life of a full-time RVer. Let's go down that road. Hello, faithful people. I'm Orlean. I'm Gary. And we just got done doing laundry. You know, a lot of people think that when we get back to Wisconsin that we use everybody, we use all our family's laundry facilities, but we don't. Um, we will occasionally maybe take a shower at his mom's, um, but most of the time we stay pretty independent in our own home. Um, things are really changing. Holy cow. Because we don't have full hookup, we just have a regular house current electric, we have to look for a place to dump our tanks every so often, like about a week or so. And we used to go to um, a campground not too far from Montello. It's actually just outside of Montello. And it was uh, $10, ten dollars to dump our tanks. <laughs> it has gone up now to 20 just to dump our tanks. And to stay there overnight is $45 for one night. So it wouldn't even pay to go there for that. I mean, it's just, okay. The difference between Wisconsin and some of the other places that we go is that in Wisconsin, that people could only camp really May through maybe part of October. And then it gets too cold and then they have to close down. A lot of campgrounds close down the, uh, the middle of October. So they have a short season. And a lot of people, instead of having a summer home on the lake, they have a RV parked on one of the many lakes that are around here. And that's their house on the lake for the summer. And then they can store it there over the winter as well. Those are called seasonals. And the difference between that and like in Texas, in Texas you, you maybe live in the RV park year round because the weather is mild enough that you can do that. And so that's not called a seasonal. That's, that's a permanent home for a lot of people. They've lived there for years in some of the same RV parks. So that's kind of a big difference. And then up here it's just all tourist, tourist, tourist stuff because of the lakes and the yeah, and it's just getting really expensive. When we're at our son's in, um, down in Oconomowoc, we are able to go to a, a water treatment center and we pay, was it $5? Yeah. $5. That's pretty reasonable. And it's, it's not too far from where they live, so that works out really well. But when we're in Montello, uh, at Gary's mom's it, it costs a lot more so we're going to we just got done with the laundry we're gonna put that away we're gonna eat some lunch and then we're going to uh, take to a different campground it's not too far with gas prices that's the other thing to, in order to we could drive to a water sanitation place but it's like 12 miles away yeah and we figured that with gas prices what they are we'd end up spending $20 anyway so, well, it's not horrible because we're not paying for camping, right? But things could be changing with all that, too. Enjoy the free stuff that we can and just grin and bear the rest of it. <laughs> <laughs> I just finished vacuuming, it took me about uh, five minutes. <laughs> That's because I did it slowly. <laughs> I can vacuum my whole house in about five minutes. Pretty cool. We have a hand grinder that grinds the beans. You crank it so it's not electric or battery. You use your arm power. And then it's a pour over. 
And it works quite well, doesn't it? Does. It does. Yes. <laughs> you learn patience. Yes, it's very therapeutic. So we have fresh ground coffee beans, and then you put them in the filter, pour the hot water over it. Oh, okay, Gary's going to demonstrate how we crank the beans. Mm. But we usually don't do it. <laughs> yeah, right. We usually don't do it until just before we make them so that they're really fresh. Yep. So that's enough of the demonstration. <laughs> We don't have very much that we have to do when we get ready to move the RV. We have a little lamp that goes there, and I put it in here when we're ready to go. And uh, up here is the Berkey, usually, and we're just taking that into Gary's mom's house for now. Normally, we have to make sure it's empty, and then we put it in the, the sink, the two sinks. But we won't have to do that as long as we're at his mom's. To conserve water, after we got done doing the dishes from lunch, I'm going to put that water in this jug. We use this just for flushing out the toilet, um, or I'll put it in with the new sanitation pod after the tanks are emptied. A little soapy water. I'll move my two little turtles down below. They just nestle down in there when we go down the road. And this, I usually run till it's empty, but this time it didn't. So I have a jar that I keep under here. I'll just pour this in there. Then we put some things under the table. That basket is usually on the table. It has all kinds of stuff in it. It's got notes for writing it's got some our vitamins it's got just things to have handy pens and pencils and whatever and then um, we also keep our laptops underneath here and the water that I just um, took out of the Berkey that's under here and then all I have to do is hook these up there's little holes under here most RVs have a, a table that is, I'm doing this one-handed, <laughs> most, most RVs have a table that is on a pedestal, and when we redid the floors, we took the pedestal out, and Gary built this instead. So uh, when we move, we just use these to keep it in place. It works great. This is one thing I would love to do sometime this summer is to replace this table. It's really showing some wear right here, and uh, especially on this over here on this side. It's really getting bad, but I don't know what to replace it with. It might just be a matter of replacing the this. So it goes all the way around. I'm not crazy about the gold, but we would also like to make this a little wider. Like maybe maybe six inches wider, so three inches more on either side to make it a little bit bigger. I mean, this is we do everything on here. We eat on here. We work on our laptops on here. This is a very much used space in our home, and I would like to make the table a little bigger. Everything is held down with command strips otherwise, so they don't move. I don't know if you can see. Can you see under there? There it is. And this one's held on with the command strips. The lamp is too heavy, so I don't do that. That stuff will stay there, no problem. The spices are okay there. This is the little rack my niece made for me for my so I have more room for my more common spices that I use more often to have those more accessible. That's awesome. It's been working out great. And otherwise, the only other thing is to make sure all the cabinet doors are shut and latched. And I go around and I check all of that before we move. And a big one is to make sure that the refrigerator and freezer doors are shut and latched. He has not unplugged us yet. When he does, it's going to show the gas symbol. And since we're going such a short distance from home, we're going to probably just let it run on propane while we're traveling. 
Otherwise, if we're going to be doing a long, longer time traveling, we will shut it off. It's dark in the bathroom, but I make sure all the everything is off, the pump and everything. These need to be latched. <laughs> we have done that a few times where that wasn't latched. That was not good. All these are latched. That's good. All right. Got to put a, few, a couple things in the sink, and then we can go. Okay, so you saw before how the little electric thing was there. Now it's on gas. Something else we want to do while we're here is to give this a good touch up. Gosh, these really have taken a beating. Oh, they look awful. We were going to do it in Texas and we didn't have time. Normally we put these in the back of the truck when we travel, but because we're just going to go dump the tanks and come back, we're just going to leave them here at Gary's mom's. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> This is the easy way to do it. You used to do hand crank, didn't you? Yes, I did. And then we saw some YouTube channel that talked about using the drill. I was like, oh, brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> the things you can learn from a YouTube channel. Most important first step. Yes. Sure that's <laughs> we've we've known people that did not take their end gate down, and uh, they crunched it up pretty good. You can watch the whole thing in the rear view mirror. That is the advantage of having a fifth wheel. Normally I'm inside while he's doing all this. A lot of people don't know this either is that inside the hitch here that's where we keep our cord when we're parked you just you're gonna plug that in I don't know if I'm catching it this is why I don't do this this is why I'm usually in the house when Gary's doing all this because <laughs> it's safer that way. Yeah. What are you hooking up there? There you go. Okay. Brakes and lights. The brakes and lights. Okay. I should know that. I knew that. I was just testing you to make sure you knew. You gotta do that Figma jiggy bobber, don't you? Oh, see, I'm in the way. Okay. There you go. This is the exciting part. You can fast forward this part. I will. <laughs> Now that he has it hooked up, we'll take out the last chalk. See he pulls ahead a little bit. That's good. Got it. It's not turning. There we go. Always when it's on camera.
If I can't see Gary, he can't see me. Alrighty. Usually when we're traveling, if we haven't been staying in campgrounds and we are between places and my hair is doing funny things. <laughs> I need a haircut bad. <laughs> anyway, when we're between places and we need to dump our tanks, we use an app called Santa Dumps. S-A-N-I-D-U-M-P. Santa Dumps. I think there's an S at the end of that. Santa Dumps. And we um, are able to find all kinds of places that you can dump your tanks for less money. Sometimes it's even free. It just depends on the city, the state, the location. Here's an example of a seasonal. They have, uh, sometimes they have families that will, will do in the same area so that they're together. And then they'll come up together. And then these must be all um, overnight or maybe by the week kind of campsites. Yeah. But these are all seasonals. Some of them have patios, little gardens, some have uh, gazebos, some have decks. They're not pallet decks either. <laughs> they're, they're a real deck. So this is what you do when you want to live by the lake, but you don't have want to buy the land, you can just rent a seasonal at an RV park. I'm not going to show the entire procedure, and if I do, maybe I'll fast forward it. Because <laughs> there's a lot of videos on how to dump your tanks, your tanks. But one thing that for sure is that you always want to wear disposable gloves. So that's what Gary's getting out right now. Unless you're really tough. Really tough, right? <laughs> Black. <laughs> Some dump stations do not have a hose with water to do, to, so you can rinse out your, your sanitation, your uh, RV sewer hose. And I'll show you that in a minute, how we do that with a hose. But when you don't have a hose, we have um, an outside shower. So then we just have to make sure we have water in, in the fresh water tank so that we can run the shower and run the water through the the sewer hose and flush it out that way. See, I don't need to do a video on this because all the instructions are right here. <laughs> we fit the, keep this in the back of our truck. This is the big hose. Yeah. All right, Let first one you let go is the black tank, correct? Always let the black tank go first. I'm going to shut this off while this goes. So while Gary is doing that, I'm going to quick go inside. I have to turn the pump on for that. I don't really have to see what I'm doing. But I'm just demonstrating to you that I let it run, keep running. Okay, so then after I do that, Gary's gonna let the gray tank go. That's our soap water and stuff like that, our shower water. And that helps to rinse out the hose better, in addition to using this hose to rinse it out. We have three tanks. We have, uh, we have a black tank, which is your, your toilet stuff. And then we have uh, the gray tank for the shower and bathroom sink. And then we have a third one for the galley, which is in the kitchen. And so we have three all together that we have to empty. Now Gary's just rinsing the hose off on the outside. And make sure all the extra stuff goes inside the drain. Yep. You wouldn't believe how many people do not rinse this. It's just unbelievable. They leave all kinds of disgusting stuff. Yes, they do. Mm 
I'm going to close the drains, unhook it. And now you can go put a packet in there. All right. Show him doing. So now he's going to just rinse this hose out and he's going to keep it the other end down there in the hole yet. And just flush it through. In the meantime, Remember that water I saved from the dish soap? Okay. We use these BioPack. They're an enzyme that breaks down waste, and they're a deodorizer, and they're, they're natural. They are not um, chemicals, so they're, you wouldn't want to eat it, but, <laughs> but it's safer than having the really high chemical ones. Okay, this is all I do. Drop the packet in there and add the soapy water. That's it. It's really nice when they have the restrooms very close by and Gary can, even though he's wore gloves, he can still go in and wash his hands. And that, my friends, is $20 worth of entertainment right there. <laughs> I'm feeling fresher. <laughs> What's really crazy is that some of these campgrounds will charge you $10 per person to come and visit you here. I don't know if it was this one. I don't think it was this one. Okay. But I mean, at some of these campgrounds, they will charge, in addition to you staying there, they will charge a visitor $10 per person to come and see you. And then at if you stay overnight, they'll charge $15 per person if the visitors stay overnight. So can you imagine if you have your grandchildren come to visit? and they stay with you yeah. per night, per person? Wow. <laughs> and everything's done in reverse. When we downsized five years ago, we held on to some things because someday we would probably be getting into a house or something eventually. We didn't know how things were going to go that first year, so it just made sense to hang on to some things. So we have some things in Gary's mom's upstairs, and I'm going to show you what we have. I haven't looked at it for, since last fall. And keep in mind, this is not all our stuff. Some of it is his mom's. Behind door number one is uh, mostly empty bins. <laughs> That's really all we have is mostly empty bins. Um, I have a glider rocker. Um, I have empty bin. I have a, a coffee table down here that I absolutely love it. It was handmade and uh, it is really a nice piece of um, craftsmanship. It would have been silly to get rid of that. I want to sell this dollhouse, but I don't have the characters for it anymore because my daughter took the characters and got a different dollhouse up in Canada but it was easier to just take the characters in the suitcase when that was about three years ago. This, I guess we can be using this uh, summer. It's uh, just, we've just used it for water. And then I have this desk that we could use as a small table if we wanted to. I don't know, I might sell that. Those are all empty. Um, here's a little Tykes set that we're probably gonna end up selling 
because all of our grandchildren are either too old for it or they have sets of their own that they've gotten. It is a little different. Okay, first of all, all these bounce sheets are on the floor because they repel spiders and bugs and mice and things like that. So bounce sheets, it has to be bounce for some reason. I don't know why. But there's a couple things here I wanted to sell and I couldn't get them to go. There's a um, handmade cabinet underneath here. I had this uh, handcrafted for me years ago. It's, I think it's oak. I mean, it's it's a nice piece of furniture, but I tried selling it and it didn't sell. Um, I have some other things. Some of these bins are partially empty. Even what's on here is not in here anymore. Um, this is our couch someday. <laughs> it's a pew bench. It's a an old pew bench that I painted red. And the kids used to sit on it at the table when they were little. And the grandkids. But, again, I don't know. We have one small cooler. That is our sleep number bed. And that is probably... The most valuable thing we have is the sleep number bed. Those are all the components that make it, and this part has the air chambers in it. So that is the biggest deal in here. The rest is all could go, I guess, most of it. I have some baby toys in here. Don't have any babies anymore. And the babies that we do have are in Canada, and they aren't going to be coming anytime. And the littlest one is already two over two years old and then we have a I have some good dishes in here I have a lot of bins with pictures in them so uh, these were supposed to sell these picture frames I tried selling those um, the last two years I really haven't done anything because of COVID and uh, not knowing how things would sell there's some <laughs> there's some games up there um, just stuff that I probably will not be keeping a lot of it. That's an air mattress, and we've used that when we've been here to stay overnight if we had to move out of our RV for a night for some reason, like they had to do a repair or something. We have that as a backup. Um, we have car table and chairs. There's our car table. Those are our, the chairs. We have a dining room set if we ever need one. <laughs> um there's boxes up in here that are tax papers and tax documents, things like that. We don't need those anymore. They're all past the expiration of when, how long you have to keep them on hand. Um, more picture frames I can get rid of. So yeah, there's gonna, this is gonna be a big project this summer. Um, last summer I spent a lot of time with my mom and I will never regret that because my mom passed away in January, as most of you know. And so I really am glad that we spent so much time with her last year. This is a bedroom. This is one bedroom of stuff. I'm going to just kind of, and it's really gotten kind of out of hand. Like I said, the last few years, we've just been kind of stuffing things back in here after a garage sale. Uh, and then I just, I should turn a light on. That didn't help much. <laughs> small light. Anyway, uh, this is this is something we're going to work on. The goal is to, we can fit this into a storage unit if need be. Another thing that we kept was just a few garden tools. Right now, Gary is trimming off some stuff off the his mom's lilac bushes. Aren't they pretty? Lilacs. Can you smell them? Mmm. <laughs> and now I'm going to cut Gary's hair. But I just want to point out one thing before I do. This, this right here is not there you go that is not from me i haven't even started yet ouch <laughs> i have all these gadgets here and i have no clue on how to use them 
I've never done it. I've never looked at a video. <laughs> but I've been cutting Gary's hair for several years. And he hasn't complained yet. I trust her. <laughs> I do the shortest razor thing on here without it being bare. Just as a little bit of a guard. I always do the back first because if I'm making mistakes, Gary can't see them. <laughs> Too shabby. Feel so lightheaded. <laughs> <laughs> so that was our day. Uh, in addition to that, that one bedroom that I talked about upstairs that had mostly bins in it of ours, something happened. That dust was not up there. It was really thick. Or an, and there's no vents. There's no furnace vents up there. So we're not sure what caused it. If it oh no. So we spent about an hour and a half cleaning everything up, up there. 
That is not a typical <laughs> RV day for us. No. <laughs> we added a few extra things in there. Gary also fixed something of his mom's on his mom's cupboard oh, yeah. and uh, mowed her lawn. So, Fortunately, it's a small yard. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, hope you like this little video. <laughs> and if you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you have not subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button down below. And then next to it, the bell is going to pop up. Ring the bell. And then you'll be notified every time new videos come up. Check out our Facebook page, Roads of Faith. There's some extra things on there. And until next time, God bless.